Parental discretion is advised. It's Royal Rumble Week. What more do you need to know? Stay tuned. Mayhem Show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Tuesday night tradition. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 403. I am Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Ready to uh, kick things off here from the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And as usual, I have a bunch of people joining me. Uh, remote on the lines, and we'll be expanding that out here in the second half. First of all, of course, uh, DJ Lunchbox, Papa Lunchbox, how you doing, sir? I am in the market for three gallons of chicken blood. I am performing black magics to make my computer work, and I am running low on chicken blood. If anyone knows where I can buy three American-style gallons of chicken blood, not hen blood, this is important, because elder gods are picky. Three gallons, American-style chicken blood. I will also settle for Vienna sausages. Thank you. There you go. Coming up, I have coming to us from his cell phone today, uh, which is yeah, pretty, that's right. pretty astonishing. That's, that's true. That's <laughs> an actual thing that's happening. It's, it's the from best, my cell phone. It's, a, it's the best you've looked in weeks, sir. Uh, thank you. Well, I've shaved. Oh That's yeah, there's that. There's that. Also, that's the only us, difference. Joining us from the Bronx, New York, he's also was on this week's awesome cast. Is Mad Mike? How you doing, sir? I feel like I need to say this because I couldn't curse on awesome cast. Fuck snow. Well, there's that. It's fucking hot outside, sir. <laughs> it's only gotten worse. I believe the tauntaun clawing at my air conditioner. And also joining us, uh, also from here in the Pittsburgh area, our friend in the mainstream media. He helps with the news every day. Uh, he's, what, the Riz? Whoops, I forgot to change that. <laughs> Matt oh. Carlins, how you doing? What? No! No! No, I don't want to be the Riz! <laughs> tell, every, tell everybody your Twitter. Tell, tell everybody your Twitter so, 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 before I can, so I can fix this. That's at T-H-E-E-R-I. No, 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 not that oh. one. Um, it's at Matt Carlin's for all your snowy commute needs. There you go. I'm here and happy to be here so ready for some serious wrestling conversations. I like serious wrestling conversations. Excellent. And of course, uh, before we kick things off here, uh, we do want to uh, take, a, take a moment and uh, acknowledge the passing of uh, the great Mae Young. Um, I, don't, I, I know most of us here have uh, really kind of gotten to uh, experience Mae Young uh, you know, since the Attitude Era and everything and not so much the older, older stuff. But let's, let's, let's be honest, I think she predates our parents in most cases. Um, but, uh, you know, just a moment to acknowledge, you know, uh, uh, you know, lost something, uh, very special, I, I, you know, it's very, it's not, you know, I know Joe Dabrowski and others are saying, um, when's the next time you're going to see somebody, um, who has been a part of wrestling and sports entertainment for as long as she has been. Um, so I really wish we would have seen her at a hundred. So. Um, any, I, wanted anybody else? See, I wanted to see. I wanted to see May Young versus Aurora Rose. I really want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but we'll be uh, talking a little bit about uh, that a little bit more uh, later on. Remember when, of course. Uh, in the meantime, uh, of course, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 403. Uh, thanks again. Our awesome intro uh, by Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com. If you want to check out more stuff, it's free to download. Um, you can also check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Um, we're on Blip TV on your Roku device, and of course, uh, uh, Spreaker lately as well. So go check us out uh, anywhere uh, we are found uh, that is convenient for you. And if there's anything missing, let us know. We're trying to expand out as much as possible. Please comment on this on the video on youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Or if you see us on iTunes, you see us on 
Stitcher, any anything like that. If there's a comment button, please uh, hit it. Share the episode if you like it. Uh, help us expand and get the word out about what we're doing here with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And of course, you can join us here live yourself Tuesdays at live.circuitronmedia.com about 9 p.m. Eastern in time. Of course, followed by the Indie Mayhem show we're doing at 11 p.m. Tonight, we have Jock Sampson returning. We had him on the show a good while ago, and it'll be great to have him back on again. So with that, let's uh, start the show the only way we know how with some fan mail. And uh, if you guys don't mind, I'll go ahead and take the first one here. We got uh, late last week uh, from... Uh, uh, from Alex one, Cars. Alex Cars. Yes, and the name wasn't here, and I forgot who did it. Oh, it says <laughs> in the first line. Uh, greetings, 10 percenters of the Mayhem Nation. It's your boy, good old A Cars. Okay. Uh, trying to scrub ravaging Alex Riley out of everyone's subconscious. Oh, oh. <laughs> Here's a picture of the WWE's kids book at my local library. Uh, sorry for the blurry pic. Uh, my phone was being weird that day with Royal Rumble right around the corner. I thought it was appropriate. And there's a picture here for you guys of audio. Uh, yeah, there's a children's book with Rey Mysterio on the cover called Race to the Rumble. And yes, the picture is in the style of a Sasquatch sighting. Uh, so there you go. Uh, yeah, to be w fair, Rey Mysterio matches are about as rare as a Sasquatch. Much sighting these That's days. That's true. That's true. Um, and just as repetitive. My penis is like a horse. What? <laughs> not like a not big like a horse has but my penis is shaped like a horse like a cartoon horse like a my little pony sparkle fuck that's the name my penis looks like sparkle fuck is it, huh. is it voiced by tara strong i think is this the, did we we asked for fan fiction last week or something is that what happened I can't remember. I think I blocked out so the end of last week's show. Uh, wow. Um, uh, he, he continues. Thankfully, not in the same manner. The biggest problem with having... Oh, no, he does. The biggest problem with having a peen like this is that it doesn't fit anywhere. Not in a condom, not in my pants. Did you copy and paste this? Not even in a couch. I can't even put my strange horse-shaped penis inside a couch. This is my life. Wait, Until wait, next time, on, this is good old A-Cars reminding you to keep your head up and your head up high and don't ravage Alice Riley. All right, to explain what's going on here, if you didn't see some of the discussion. Hey, Matt, I'm glad you're back By on the, the show way, for this. 403 no, episodes. No, you do not no, no, no. Email. It's nice to see the PGR. Don't free screen emails, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me. It's my fault. I'm so sorry. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> I'm like, I like, I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, it's nice. He's telling us about a library book, and then I read it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had. I'm having a rough time, and I needed to take out my aggression, so I, what? I added to his email. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I thought you? I would delete it. I thought I would. <laughs> I thought I would delete it before <laughs> you read it, but I didn't. <laughs> All right. It was worth it. All right. It was worth I, it. It goes gut catching. Oh, We've been kind of dabbling in the WWE fan fiction, unfortunately. <laughs> you can check out the end of last week's show, oh, episode 402. Now you, made it reading you know, the Four Horsemen have an entirely new meaning now. Oh, man. <laughs> um, Dear, no, LB, LB, you're supposed to read this one. I was contacted personally and instructed to read this. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Dear Mayhem Showers, I needed a hyphen or else it would have said showers. Is that some sort of weird sex thing? Smaller guys make better wrestlers. Yeah, I said it. Giant and muscle heads like Big Show, unless he cries. Batista, Ryback, Big E are not entertaining. However, due to the history of the business where being huge is how you got anywhere, they keep trying. How many wrestlers like Daniel Bryans and CM Punk have we missed out on because they were passed over for not being, quote, pushable? Dean Ambrose would have never gotten a chance if it weren't for Roman Reigns' lack of, lack of talking ability. Two weeks ago on Raw, I watched a wrestler prompt an entire crowd with two fingers, all five foot ten, two 210 pounds of him, yet they bring back Batista and let a lovable way over little dwarf work the mid-card. Alrighty then. Maybe it's time to let go of the muscle heads and rely on the entertainment of the 
normal sized guys. Maybe Eamon is right. Maybe wrestling is the way to go. Peace out, Chachi. P.S. Except for Rey Mysterio. Fuck that midget. There you go. Wow, Chachi's actually watching wrestling again. I have watching a wrestling. problem with Chachi not finding Biggie Langston entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yo, know, Biggie, Biggie doesn't get a lot of mic time on TV. Biggie's good in the ring. Yeah, he is. He is. That match guy. he had with Fandang- Fandango a couple weeks ago was fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Mm hmm. Right. Uh, I, I've got a problem with this. Um, I, I mean, I know this is like a trendy topic right now is to, to bag on the guys because we all want to see Daniel Bryan do good. What the heck? My phone's ringing. Never mind. As I was saying, um, yeah, it's become <laughs> trendy to bag on the large wrestlers because we all want to see Daniel Bryan be in the Royal Rumble and win the Royal Rumble and do all that stuff. Um, but, I mean, one of the basic, you know, tent poles of professional wrestling is guys that you – literally and honestly believe can kick another guy's ass and i'm sorry that means that sometimes you have to be a little bit bigger than the other guy um it I just is think the it's larger than life right factor. now yeah 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 he's right and mike's right it's the larger in life character you go to see holy crap big show's huge oh wow these guys are huge you don't run into a guy the size of biggie langston the, the size of big show uh you know day to day and and that makes them you know it said they're larger than life, and and that's what that's what they go for. And it's easier to see a guy that looks larger than life and can't wrestle. At least he's big and can pick a dude up, right? Versus you know a little guy that you know that's athletic. You know it's harder to find somebody that good that they transcend their size, right? Well, their personality has to be bigger than their physical size. Exactly. Like, Shawn Michaels pulled that off. Bret Hart, not so much. But he didn't need to because he was really, really, really good in the ring. Yeah. And, and that was part of what made him larger in life. Is that, I mean, you still believe that Bret Hart was so technically sound that he kicks him up, kick another guy's ass. You believe that in a legit fight, Bret Hart would have a chance. Yeah. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, that's what it comes down to. I mean, I, I don't think, you know... I think we're to the point here with a guy like Daniel Bryan and a guy like CM Punk that we think those guys can kick another guy's ass, um, depending on you know, other factors, obviously. But and it's not true for every small guy that you don't believe that. It's not true for every big guy that you believe that every big guy looks like he can kick another guy's ass. You can look at like a guy like um, like um, Matt Morgan, who is um, a, who fits the bill to a T. But when you see the guy in the ring, you just you just kind of don't buy it. He just doesn't look like an ass kicker in the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need that. Certainly. All right. We got one more here. Uh, Dear Bammers, of course, by uh, D- Dustin, who's been really great. Hey, really great conversation. You guys, of course, been doing the TNA after show there on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. We have a playlist with all those after shows and the wrap-ups. Um, but Dustin has been really engaging with you guys. I, I think, Mike, you might have been a part of it. I know Eamon and Riz have been. Um, and a really good discussion about what's good, what's not in TNA, a lot of opinions there. So please go check that out and get involved in that, too. Those guys do it live after Impact every week. Uh, I've been and doing I some actually great stuff. Uh, just got off the horn with Dustin. Yeah. He's going to join us for our TNA after show. Awesome, awesome. I, as long I think, as the schedule's online. I think that's great. Um, so, Dustin writes, Dear Mayhemers, I apologize for missing out and not sending any questions last week. Yes, they were sorely missed. Um, between real-world issues, TNA doing their best to confirm accusations of being uh, WCW 2.0 and the Magnus vs. Styles match and the end of a one-week Daniel Bryan heel turn, I was just at a loss. Uh, it seems, oh, my cursor jumped, as if things make a bit more sense after this week of wrestling, so I'm in a better place to contribute without worrying of throwing my phone while I write this. Questions! Why is it that when the American Wolves were thought to be going to WWE, it was a good addition to the tag team division? But when they signed a TNA, they are just guys who kick, and TNA are dumb for signing them. Um, I, I can I can address this. Okay. Because Eamon, Eamon was one who called them guys that kick. And I think he had that opinion when they were in NXT and WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and NXT and TNA. I don't really know enough about the Wolves to say one way or the other. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with them. 
but at the same time, it's just, I don't know. It seems like TNA is trying to restart things, Mm -hmm. and I want to see if they're actually able to do it or if they're just doing lip service because every time it seems like they're getting rid of an old guard, they're bringing in something new and awkward. I think I, and I, I think American Wolves, like, they're talented. I, I have seen them in Ring of Honor for years. Um, and I think they are good. I, they would be good for TNA. I think everybody just sees um, WWE could do something with somebody as talented as them, and then TNA is seen as they're just, they mishandle everybody they can get their hands on. Um, Besides, it's not like TNA has kept stars that they've brought in. That's, that's true, too. Like, where's Trent Beretta? They brought yeah. him in for one show, and then he was gone. Who's the last guy that they stuck with? Ethan Carter the third. And and I think the jury's still out on that. I think it's too soon. Months. I think it's too soon. Like I can see him disappearing within a month. You know, uh, knowing I, 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 uh, Zima Ion, but he's doing good, and they did a change for him. But I don't count that as like it's not like he's a nuts Bobby Roode or anything like that. I don't know, and I don't see any writing on the wall that that is going to happen with TNA, unfortunately. You know, same with Ethan, uh, Ethan Carter, maybe more so, uh, uh, unfortunately. Um, but I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's definitely a perception problem. TNA has a big, big perception problem to everybody except for the people who are diehard TNA Impact people, which there are some, I'm sure. The, the 200 people that showed up in, uh, in Georgia <laughs> to that live show. Yeah. Um, Really, there's indies doing better than that. Uh, I this did something happen weird with the formatting. Uh, how the, I still appreciate how talented is someone like he's talking about Fandango here. Did I miss a question? No, you missed part of the email. Okay. Oh, is it not in here? No, it right after right after the question. To me, a talent is still a talent. Okay, yeah, I don't have that part. Uh, yeah, he, you're, he does you're, go into. I'm, for how dumb the gimmick is, he still appreciates how talented someone like uh, Johnny Curtis is, even if I hate his Fandango character. And though I am not the biggest fan of Richards, I'll take him if, if Edwards comes along and he uh, keeps the gimmick. And their names, sorry, but their WWE names were weak. And yeah, they were. The Pitbull is like, means so many things. It's been used so many times. So, Well, to be fair, so Wolves. Yeah, I guess I guess a little bit. Because, I mean, TNA is just calling them the Wolves. <laughs> Where I mean, we, where else have they used what are wolves? they, fucking Twilight characters? Yeah, exactly. Um, question two. Do you feel that Dreamer is an a- is as an agent is as bad of an idea as people claim? Is Tommy Dreamer becoming an agent again? Probably. It's why, that's probably why they're working with House of Hardcore. Oh, for TNA. I think he would help yeah. TNA, to be honest. Uh, he was an agent for WWE during the Ruthless Aggression Era. And was credited uh, by many as being a guy who watched and studied hours of tape to help decide the right people to bring in front of Vince. I've seen a lot of stories on Art of Wrestling by, yeah, Dreamer called me up and said, hey, do you want to work for us? Well, Um, Dreamer basically got the new WWE ECW off the ground. Yeah, yeah, which was Him and Paul Lee. Like, Dreamer was the guy who called up Kofi. He was the guy who called up Sheamus. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Which, yeah, he's a good guy for talent like that. He's 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 a perfect mind for that. Unfortunately, we we know what happens when good, you know, people we think are like I, you know, we all thought Dave Lagana was going to do great things for Impact, but I really don't see evidence of that. Um, uh, it, he goes on for that. One. Wait, did I finish that one? Yeah, uh, I think I think uh, I would think a guy like uh, that would be a smart talent scout for TNA that TNA desperately needs. But see, it's not. The thing is, TNA doesn't need a talent scout. TNA has all the talent in the world. Mm -hmm. They need good stories to utilize said talent. Yeah. Because you have four of the most talented guys on your roster. In Eric Young, Joseph Park, Christopher Daniels, and Kaz. Being wasted in a mid-card storyline that has lasted Almost a half of a year. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that hasn't been escalated to a main event level stuff, that's where TNA's problem is. Because TNA, they've spent the past three months not knowing what what was going on with AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. Like, if he wasn't coming back, 
You shouldn't have given them the belt in the first place. So they spent three months of mop-up in which they just had Magnus turn heel because he's, excuse me, the only one who made sense at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now, like, they're trying to do a weird thing. Like, it's not talent that TNA needs. TNA has enough people on its roster. They need better stories. They need, they need better people putting the show together, it seems, in the long run. Yes. I, I agree with Mike. I mean, I think TNA has all the talent that they need. And I'll take it a step further, Mike. I think their biggest problem right now is what they're doing in the ring. I think there's no storytelling in the ring. I think the matches are bad. I mean, in general. I mean, you get one, maybe two during a show that are maybe passable. But I think overall... The matches in the ring and the storytelling in the ring is where TNA is really in right now. And it makes it impossible to watch. If TNA wants to get things turned around, they need to go all the way back to basics. They need to take the talent that they have, and they just need to start creating good matches. That's where it all has to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when's the last time you had a, holy crap, that was a good match? And that used to be, like, at least, like... Yeah, like there that be, used like, to be TNA's thing. Yeah, it's like, that's where I go to see wrestling. When? When was that TNA's thing? 2007. How, 2007. How, how long have we been doing this show? Since 2007-ish. Since 2007. Six. Okay. Six, I think. So, all right. Go back five years. Mm -hmm. TNA being terrible has been a staple on this show forever. <laughs> <laughs> TNA being terrible has been a cornerstone of wrestling forever. What TNA needs is a bullet. <laughs> wrap it up. Just fucking shut it down. TNA has been a shit show for too long. It's done. It needs to be done. The only good that TNA serves anymore is giving us something to talk about on this show where we can all agree, wow, that's pretty bad. Mm. TNA it's needs just, to actually get rid of Kurt Angle and Sting. Hey, but it even that, even that is an thing, so it can plug I mean, its I mean, actual talent. I mean, we got rid of Hogan. That took a lot. That took up a lot of TV time. You know, that's yes, out of the way. And the product has improved since Hogan was on. Mm -hmm. The product has improved since Hogan was on. In fact, over the Christmas break, it was really, really good. We weren't able to do hangouts on it because of the holidays, but it was really, really good. So they did really and good then, when nobody's watching because of the holidays. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it was really good, but then they had to wrap up AJ's storyline, and then everything has gone to shit again because now Sting is back in the title picture, even though he's not supposed to be in the title picture. Mm -hmm. Like, Sting, I want Sting to do one more thing in wrestling, and that's it. And it just, just fight The Undertaker and lose. And move that's on. it. That's all Sting can do left in this business. Unless he becomes a road agent. Or something like that, he needs to be off TNA TV. And, like, I know he has the title versus career match this Thursday on Impact. I won't spoil anything, but even if Sting loses that, I don't trust TNA to actually get rid of him. Mm -hmm. Just like I don't think AJ Styles is really gone. Okay. Like, they need to stop resting on their laurels. Like, People can say that WWE hasn't built new stars because people say that a lot. Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, The Shield, The Wyatts, yep. they yep. built new stars. They don't have new mega stars like John Cena and Randy Orton yet, but they don't need to have them yet because John Cena and Randy Orton still put out quality matches. Right. Like Sting and Kurt Angle need to go the fuck away. They yeah. do. They're not helping They just anybody. need to go back to WWE, have their swan song, and leave wrestling. Right. Uh, one more question. And three. Uh, make, speaking of Dreamer and his uh, crazy-ass antics, I was wondering if you guys had a wrestling weapon that you preferred to see in matches of hardcore nature or with a gimmick stipulation. Uh, he, he, he's, his side is <clears throat> excuse me, a good... Uh, a good table spot is nice, but all the time, but my all-time favorite would be the scaffold from Starcade '87. 
Night of the Skywalkers. The Road Warriors vs. Midnight Express had a match that wasn't the hardest hitting, but the element of gravity made it intense and even resulted in Jim Cornette breaking some bones. I don't know. What do you guys, what, what, what's kind of your favorite pick? I've been a fan of the steel chair forever. It's classic, it's it's solid. I like it. Um, kendo sticks are always pretty, look pretty vicious to me. And, uh, I'm a big fan of the kendo stick. Yeah. I would you, also Mike? say I, uh, I have an affinity. I know this might not get me any points with the IWC, but I do have an affinity for the sledgehammer. Simply for the <laughs> fact that it's an absolute killer whenever you use it during a match. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always nice, yeah. Yeah. I'm tired of people I, kicking out too much from the foreign objects, but the sledgehammer usually gets the job done. I think my favorite is when a wrestler would go into the crowd and see a sign held up by a fan and hit someone with that sign to peel it off and reveal it was a stop sign. <laughs> I loved when people did that. That's awesome. Absolutely loved it. Like, we need more of that in wrestling. More surprise foreign objects. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's all for me this week, he says. Enjoying the show and keep up the work on the wrap-ups. Uh, watching Eamon get pissed off at TNA is the highlight of my week. And yes, he's been doing so in the chat room, uh, Eamon. Uh, he did comment. We did have some comments from the from the emails. Uh, all from Eamon, by the way. Fun fact, everyone who watches mainstream wrestling complains that wrestlers should be smaller guys and not muscled up. On the indies, I've heard fans complain that they want guys to look like wrestlers and have muscles and not be smaller. Yeah. So in other words, uh, wrestling fans are never satisfied. News at 11. <laughs> yeah, amen. amen. Wrestling fans don't know what they want. That's why we have to be told. So. Exactly. Exactly. Um, he agrees with Matt at some point. Uh, don't tell me X Division matches for something to improve TNA. The X Division has horrible storytelling. It's always had horrible storytelling, but it's had great matches. It, it, yeah, the X Division, the, the, the thing that pisses me off when we talk about the X Division is it got so bogged down with, with with the gimmickry of even just like the multi-man matches and then they're doing like the whatever like the, the trapeze and they're doing the, the terror dome and all that other junk when it was just <laughs> one guy versus one guy they were great wrestlers who had yeah. great matches when they filled it up with a bunch of garbage you know you, you lost the essence of what it was supposed to be garbage in and, garbage and, out. and matt matt remember yeah. that match is called Terror Dome. Oh, I'm sorry. Terror Dome. I miss the Terror Dome. Oh. The fucking big ass Lego cage. That was great. <laughs> Didn't somebody get their foot stuck in it? Homicide. Homicide got his foot yeah. stuck in Homicide it. Homicide could not climb out of that damn thing <laughs> on live TV. It was fantastic. Awesome. That was a rough night. <laughs> All right. Uh, and with that, uh, that's our fan mail. Uh, we'll be right back with some Remember When. Uh, but in the meantime, go check this out. Of course, uh, we've been talking about the great refereeing 101 with Jimmy Corderas, uh, now available on Sorgatron Media. Uh, you get some extras with that, some matches uh, with him refereeing recently with the IWC International Wrestling Cartel, not the IWC Matt Carlins was talking about a minute ago, uh, as well as Prime Wrestling uh, and some great matches there. Uh, go check that out. Here's a little bit of a trailer, and we'll be right back with Remember I When. I shouldn't even put this on camera, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> If you're a promoter or a, or a talent in the ring and you do not understand or underappreciate the value of a referee, then you're not going to succeed going forward. Anybody can do it. It's so simple. You just walk in the ring, you stand around, you yell and scream and say, you count one, two, three at the end of a match. It's so much more than that. There's so much detail involved in, become, in being a very good uh, professional wrestling referee. The main purpose of a referee in a wrestling match is to help enhance the match and help enhance the story that the talent in the ring is trying to tell without being a distraction. Referees do not get enough credit for, for, for what they do. Chief Jay Strombo says, you got your stuff with you? I said, yeah. He says, well, put it on your reffing tonight. Well, what do I do? 
Two guys are battling on the outside, right? You start your 10 count. When you get to four, one of them rolls back in. What's the count on the guy on the outside? Five. Yes. I see some guys start over once this guy rolls back in. Why? Now, from a logic standpoint, if I'm coming in here and I want to back this guy up, don't I know that this guy's standing right there? Counting over here. What are you counting, his butt cheeks? Heat doesn't go to the referee because they're taking advantage of you while you're doing your job correctly. Ignore the referee, I don't care. Count the seven, count the 10, count the 15. We're gonna get our double team thing. We're gonna get our double hip toss, our double elbow, double drop kick. Everybody's gonna go to the top. One's gonna drop a leg, one's gonna splash. We're gonna do this, and then I'm gonna get out. Again, you're sitting there like the I hated that spot, I never liked it. I've done it, it's not, I'm not saying I've never done it. I have done that spot, I just dislike it immensely. If you ended the match, you'd probably get a pat on the back from the office. Boys would be real pissed at you. A small facial expression will do a lot more than this over-exaggerated, oh my God, kind of thing. Referee bumps, in my opinion, should not look like you have been trained to take bumps. Rock looked right at Earl and said, in the middle of the ring, this is the finish. <laughs> and he counted three. Vince's big pet peeve is, do you remember Eddie Guerrero beating Brock Lesnar at the pay-per-view when he hit him with the frog splash after Brian took the bump and he cut? It always drove Vince nuts that The 20 plus years I spent there doing what I loved doesn't get much better than that. If somebody says to you, yeah, but you're just a referee, you say, damn right I am. And happy to be. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, this week, as we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, the uh, wrestling community suffered a huge loss in the form of uh, Mae Young passing away. And uh, as a tribute, um, we are going to, this week's Remember When, we're going to talk about our favorite Mae Young moments. Um, now, we're all younger fellow here, so it's likely that we're going to skew towards the uh, Attitude Era, probably. Uh, one of my favorite Mae Young moments is uh, when she got power bombed through a table by uh, by the Dudley Boys. That was that, that was, was the best. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I don't know much about her early career, but I did see the, uh, the documentary Lipstick and Dynamite, mm -hmm. and it was fantastic. And she features uh, pretty strongly in that, so go uh, go check that out. Uh, Amen. What do you what what do you think about this week's movie? Hi, um, yeah, um, she definitely, as you mentioned, appealed to sort of the younger, or I, I shouldn't say the younger, the um, you know, when she she was in her late years was when most people have the memories of her, especially her stuff in the WWF and WWE. Um, but she definitely transcended that. Um, the one that I could think of being especially young um, uh, would uh, pro be fairly recent, but I really liked her return. On an episode of uh, Raw, where she uh, challenged Laycool to a match and just called them sluts and bitches, <laughs> because she is hilarious and awesome and pretty much the most badass uh, woman you'll find uh, in professional wrestling. So, uh, who's up? Is uh, Mike? Mike, what is your uh, what is your memory? Well, um. I was going to say when she called like cool sluts and bitches. It was really uh, good. Um, I'll go with the Royal Rumble since you know the Royal Rumble Sunday, where they had the Miss Royal Rumble contest, and oh, Mae Young came out and uh, she she showed fake boobies, <laughs> and they they were uh, very 
awkward. If you've seen There's Something About Mary and the character Magna in that movie, that's what Mae Young was rocking. <laughs> awesome. What about you, Riz? Uh, I'm surprised you guys haven't brought up the hand. <laughs> uh, I can't stop thinking about Mae Young giving birth to Mark Henry's baby, a.k.a. a human hand. Yeah. And what, what, has, what hasn't been brought up yet? Um, Mae Young's white, as we all know. And Mark Henry is... Not so you, you think they'd have you know an interracial baby or an interracial hand? I think yeah. the foot was black, it was, yeah. But the hand, I guess he survived, uh, is white. Anybody else catch that? Riz, that, that's racist. See what I said? See, I'm no scientist, but hand, catch. Yeah, no, we got, we got. Everyone, let's give, let's give Riz a hand. Aww, uh, what about you, Bobby? <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to go with uh, the APA uh, poker game, <laughs> when she reached into her bra and pulled out a wad of money and just took the APA for everything they had. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> awesome, you Matt? Um, you guys have taken most of my best ideas, but I think I recall a pretty funny bit. I think it was WrestleMania 20, where I think uh, Mae Young and Moolah accosted uh, Mean Gene and Bobby the Brain Heenan and dragged them into a broom closet, and uh, I think they made men out of them both. In so the, in the <laughs> I recall of it being Square pretty funny. Garden. I really liked the the whole Mae Young and, and Moolah dynamic. I'm not sure why that struck me, but there's always something cool about in wrestling about long term friends that last just like years and years and years. Um, it's cool. Like they, they were cool. They tandem. seemed like the. They seemed like the the. Uh, what are the What are the twins from from the from the Simpsons? Like Sherry, Patty and Selma. Yeah, Patty, Patty and, and Selma. Selma, but friendly, right? They really they were the, the Laverne and Shirley of wrestling. They were. Oh, they elderly. really were. They really were. Because yeah, and there was always like that that like Fabulous Moolah was was keeping May Young in check. You know. The Fabulous yeah. Moolah yeah. was. There was a lot of that. Um, the Fabulous Moolah was Abbott to Mae Young's Costello. Yes, definitely. And, and and Matt, you just took mine with the. the I, I thought nobody was going to remember that skit uh, with me and Gene and them. Uh, so I am I'm lost on this. You guys took all the I, good ones. That's all I had left. So yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's plenty. Tough more. going at the end. I mean, I mean, there's there's, there's plenty more. Uh, you know, but usually it's like, well, she came in and kissed somebody. Oh, there was a Bronco Buster. I thought she was going to lose a hip. <laughs> oh, they many. showed that in the in the in the <laughs> flash Bronco bust uh, Eric Bischoff. I think yeah, it was it was, it was Eric Bischoff. She might have done it a couple of times, but I think the no, one they she showed did, she did a lot. Yeah, the one they showed was did, like like yeah, because it was that era that with the ruthless aggression. They were still kind of HLA and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, it's just amazing to have somebody that age doing the stuff she did. Um, great, you know, I know you guys have pointed out like last night and stuff. You know, Bubba Bubba Ray having having May on her on on his tape. That was really adorable. Yeah, I, that's she lovely. she made that was Bubba Ray. Part you of can impact. make kind of a case <laughs> that the, that the Dudleys, you know, that she had a big role in in kind of getting the Dudleys rocket going that way when they came into the WWF. Then, yeah, um, she had a big role. It was a moment. They probably it, got the Dudleys mm-hmm. over more than the Hardys and Edge and Christian did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that led like completely to that that whole situation. So, um, so May Young, to, hey, to let us know your May Young uh, moments as well. Uh, hit us up at Sorgatron, uh, or if you're seeing us on YouTube, you know, tell us your May Young moment uh, in the in the comments below and all that kind of stuff. And let us know. Uh, you know, do you have any that we missed that that we definitely should have caught? Um, I know we we're we're kind of I think we hit a lot of them here. So, awesome. Um, so, hey, in the meantime, uh, you can support the show. Uh, we are have uh, some great T-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. Have you heard of it, LB? I have heard of it, Sorgatron. Yeah. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. That's right. Tees as in T-shirts, not tees as in, well, the other thing. ProWrestlingTees.com. You can buy T-shirts there from uh, any 
wrestler you like, almost. They have a huge selection there of the highest and finest quality t-shirts. Um, and uh, almost any uh, indie wrestler you would like. On top of that, they have, can you believe it? I can't believe it. The Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirts. That's right. You can get Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirts. A dream fulfilled. You can get good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can get Property of the Mayhem Show. And you can get the classic WMS Red and White Wrestling Mayhem Show logo. I can't believe it. You can't believe it. Go and give them money. Because in addition to every Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirt you buy, we get, uh, no, I'm sorry, we send uh, a pint of whimsy. Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirt, one pint of whimsy. You can't believe it. I can't believe it. Probably for good reason. ProWrestlingTees.com. Go and check them out. Okay. There you go. Get, get, get your bottled whimsy now. Uh, so let's uh, take a look. So, is there really anything to talk about other than the Royal Rumble? We talked, I think we talked more than we should have about Raw last night on the uh, wrap up. Because um, it really was kind of a lot of talking, a lot of wrestling, not a lot of wrestling uh, last night. Um, although Kofi Kingston in the main event, that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, Royal Rumble, there was, I know there's discussions on the. No. What? He, he was in there as a placeholder. Sorry. He's a placeholder. I guess still he's part of it. He counts, right? He was in there right? as a placeholder. He counts. Um, so, how are you feeling about this Rumble? It feels like there was, we talked about last night, there was no brawl at the end for, for Royal Rumble. Maybe they'll have one on SmackDown. Um, I feel like this is the least pushed Royal Rumble I've seen in a while. Mm -hmm. I Maybe least, like, pushed on t TV and as far as like what they're actually like putting out there, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for the Rumble. I, I'm excited for more this Rumble more than I'm excited for most, honestly. Okay. Uh, I think it can go a lot of different ways. And honestly, I felt, I, I sort of was like, eh, why didn't they have a brawl at the end uh, when I watched it live? But I also thought like, well, at that point it's sort of expected, so it doesn't have a meaning. It gets to a point where, you know, you expect it all the time, and when it happens, like, you're like, oh, that's the thing that always happens. But, like, like does anyone remember what uh, the brawl that happened last year, why, what caused it? No. 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 Like, it's just the thing that they do. But it, I, I think this, is ver this uh, Rumble has been very story-driven. Yeah. I think it can definitely go a lot of different ways. Um, I think there's a lot of options as to who could win it. Um, uh, more than I think that there's been in a while. True, true. And, yeah. and I don't think that, that, that the brawl at the end is really to be a memorable moment. It's a moment that's like, this is what you can expect here Sunday, you know? I mean, that's that yeah, last but... get a couple buys thing. Guys, you know, guys, yeah, but is, it's the 28th there or is 29th or whatever the rumble. I mean, guys. like, if you're not expecting that, then come yeah. on. What were we saying, guys. Mike? <laughs> There is a brawl at the end of SmackDown this week. Oh, okay. God damn it. There you go. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're trying to say, Bobby? Never mind now. <laughs> Fuck that. I, I like your presentation better, Bobby. It's Thanks. okay. It's okay, Bobby. <laughs> but, uh, Bobby look, but, but no, I think it can go a lot of different ways. Um, it can. I think the one that people are talking about the most and someone complaining about the most, it could go with Batista winning. Um, it could go – I still – believe that Daniel Bryan has a great shot of winning it, mm -hmm. a really great shot of winning it. Um, obviously, they've introduced the whole thing with CM Punk now, where he's going in as number one. Um, if he'll you know, do the whole go from number one to win it thing, I think that's possible. Um, I could see – there's plenty of ways it can go. I could see a member of the Shield taking it, maybe Roman Reigns. Um, if you want to give it to like sort of like an underdog, like surprise guy. What about Santino? Maybe even Santino, even well, though I don't know had, if he's on Santino. We TV had stuff. that tease already. 2011. Uh, but I think, honestly, the interesting part and the thing I'm most intrigued about, actually, with this Rumble, um, as opposed to Rumbles of past, is the fact that, uh, and they said it on Raw, and now it actually kind of means it, the fact that not only you win a championship match, but also a main event at WrestleMania. Yeah. Now yeah. that we have the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, you may actually get the main event. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not going to be like when Alberto Rio wins it and he gets a World Heavyweight title shot, but it's in the opener. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that always seemed like a really bad bait and switch. Like, oh, you're in the opening match. It's like, 
So it's yeah. a main event? Is that a main event? Does that even count? Really? And, may, and maybe, like, there'll, there'll be a higher profile match that will maybe trump the title match, but there's one title now. Yeah. Every so, match is a main event at WrestleMania. Yeah. Even the that, ones with the way. celebrities. Think, even the ones that, is, The one with Snooki. Yeah. Even Cody Rhodes a Big Show or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But no, I I think um, I think it can go a lot of ways. I I do agree with that. I mean, there is a lot of ways this can go, and I have been dabbling in my head all the ways. Yep. And Me too. sadly, none, none of them are the great Kali centered. Yeah. <laughs> it's one, possible. One, one scenario I, I saw is CM Punk going almost the distance to like number 30. And then number 30 is Triple H, and Triple H eliminates him to set up WrestleMania feud. Cool. Whatever. I do be. like that. I, I honestly wouldn't mind the Triple H CM Punk match at Mania. Not for the match, but I think the feud could be pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind it as long as CM Punk eventually goes over in the end, as opposed to the last uh, Maybe, time. but he's gone over a lot. It's not like he's going to get buried or whatever. But like, mm-hmm. I, I, the thing, the aspect that I really love, it's two men, and you have Triple H sort of in the authority, um, and CM Punk being like, I'm anti-authority and still or whatever but in a lot of sense like CM Punk is still sort of like sold out like he's one of like those guys now yeah whether he wants to believe it or not and in theory Triple H is kind of sold out a bit not just in the fact that like he turned on people or whatever but I think one of the things that's really not being like covered a lot in this whole story is that even though Triple H is the one that's sort of like the figurehead Stephanie is the one that really has that power and is sort of manipulating Hunter in a sense. Like, he really is under the finger of his wife. So we're waiting for the point where we find out that Stephanie really has him by the balls. Like, like explicitly. Nah. It really, fe- I mean, because as much as Triple H is, like, being that guy, mm-hmm. like, Stephanie nah. is the one making all the decisions. Stephanie is the one that's, like, being, like, the, you know, the sort of hard ass in it all. Nah. <laughs> She does have one hard ass. I'm five. Have you seen those? We've seen those shoots, Riz. Yeah. I don't know. Anybody else have any thoughts on where Rumble could go? I mean, I, I, I feel like a Brian or I think Punk. Punk is the only one I think they've really set up the win with this uh, number one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like he's the only one with a story going into Royal Rumble. Batista. I'm, I'm uh, like with, I don't. I disagree. Mike Batista. Good point. I'm scared. Batista. Brock already is lined up for elimination. Brian. Chamber. But Brian Brian could be, but he's I in a match. Daniel Bryan. Brock, Brock is lined up for elimination chamber. Isn't it? Did is they, he really? I feel like they pretty much implied that. No, but Brock has said that, and Heyman has said that. I know. No, I think, think I think Triple it, H said that on Monday night. But all right. But let's say that it is Brock versus whoever the world champion is. All right? Mm-hmm. What is the Elimination Chamber match? They'll have to decide on that. I really don't no, know. You can't I don't know have what they'll do with one it. contender because that's the Rumble winner. I, I know. So yeah. they'll have to find some way to decide that. I would. I, I think someone, maybe you, Mike, had the idea of having the, rum, the, the Elimination Chamber winner face Taker. And I think that would be I a smart that move. Would be- I think that would be, Ooh, that'd be, cool. that'd be something different. It's not, and it's Mike, not the Mike. first time they've had a match to see who faces Taker. Because I think they did that with Punk last year. No, that sounds right. My it the was way a, I oh, see yeah, it, they did on this. Raw. They did on Raw. Yeah, I no, no, obviously not a pay per view match, but but it's like they've done a winner takes on Taker, and yeah. I, I would love to see that. Just like you know, wouldn't it be amazing? They do the Elimination Chamber, and then you have the Undertaker is there presiding over it. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. That could be fun. That could be and fun. It, the way I see it, this is a bit of like sort of a fantasy booking thing, but the way I want to see it sort of procur- sort of occur, uh, as far as like set up like mania matches at the Rumble, um, I want. I think it will be. I personally want to see Triple H Punk, like I mentioned before. I think they'll do something where Punk gets near the end and like either like Kane or one of like the you know the Authority guys eliminates him. Um, 
And then I feel like Daniel Bryan could easily win the Rumble. And the storyline sort of being going with uh, Bryan versus Orton at Mania for the championship, Mm -hmm. where the story is based off of – because for some reason they're trying to make Randy Orton look like a coward and like he's afraid of everyone and like (laughs) a giant pussy. Um, (laughs) But I feel like – true. It's it's like Brian could sum it up with being like, you spent this whole time being afraid of Batista. And if Lesnar gets the title shot, being afraid of Brock Lesnar and being afraid of John Cena and all this stuff when you should be afraid of me because I'm the one that is taking you to your limit. I'm the one that has beaten you. Like I can easily take that belt off of you and I'm going to do it at WrestleMania. Yeah, that'd be good. I I could get into that. I have a question. What's up? If you just do Brian versus Orton straight at the at Mania, which I would enjoy, what do you do with John Cena? Cena could possibly get Taker. Good question. I think Cena could maybe take her. Um, Cena could possibly get some celebrity. See, honestly, not some, I, I don't mean a celebrity, but like some Taker like now. bigger name, maybe Batista. Maybe you do get Hulk Hogan or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, Hulk Hogan yeah a return match, match with Batista. Yeah, I, mean, I, I I think I mean Undertaker versus Cena is in John my Cena mind versus- at least is the biggest match they could possibly make at WrestleMania, and they're running out of time to make it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's pull the trigger, don't you know? Crap or get off the pot, make the match. I, I'm I think, I'm, I'm I sick of it just sitting there. It's been sitting there for ten years, and they refuse to do this match. Just do the I, match. I, I think they're waiting on Cena versus Taker. For when they have WrestleMania in the Dallas Stadium, so that they can get over a hundred thousand people there. I I, underst- I understand you wanting to like optimize the, the location of it, but and, and I think you agree with me on this too, Mike. Is that every year you wait, you are running the risk that you will not be able to do that match again. There is no yeah. guarantee Undertaker will be back next year or the year after. Also, this the year is Mania that. Thirty. If there's not like a bigger place to do it at the thirtieth WrestleMania. Well, but Eamon, I mean, yeah, you Taker's say WrestleMania not make it 30, to the 40th. but you ask someone what the biggest WrestleMania match of all time is, they're either going to say Hogan Rock or Hogan Andre. Hogan Andre. That was at 3 and 19. 18, 18 but I get your was. point. Yeah. But I mean, but no, I, I, I think, think, I think now, was, well, we had what, like Baker, 25, or, and Dallas. really there wasn't any like huge high profile. I mean, like, not in the sense of, I mean, they were they had good matches on the show, but it wasn't like this is the greatest match and this is going to change the world as we know it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, we're not really pulling. No, yeah, you're thing. you're definitely right. I mean, they they've never behaved that way. I mean, they had WrestleMania ten and they felt no obligation to do anything outlandish there. Um, I, I don't think they look at thirty I, and but I think like you got to do something. WWE, nowadays WWE insane. is super big on nostalgia. And is super big on like recognizing themselves. Like in Wrestle at WrestleMania ten, they were still sort of growing. So yeah. you know, and they were big, but they were still growing. They were so the they weren't going to like too. recognize their own history almost in a sense and be like, these are two of the greatest people we've ever had or yeah. whatever. Like I, men but, on a but, mission. But you, you at least see the attempt, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Men on a mission was men at WrestleMania. Mission, 10. There you go. Oh. I mean, you at least see a, a, an attempt to try to do something big. You know, uh, 30 seems like the point where you say, um, let's have Hulk Hogan come back. If there's ever a chance that Stone Cold was going to come back to wrestling, this is the time for it to happen. Anybody else? Because you've played your rock card the last two years. And I don't think The Rock's coming back this year. Um, Thank God. So, Thank God. So, I hope not. Who's The Rock? What's The Rock? What, Batista. What, what is okay. it, Batista? Really? Because <laughs> Batista looked just like The Rock last really? night. Really? Uh, hey, yeah, let's well, dress him up, right? Batista plus Hogan. Plus Hogan. You know, yeah. Plus Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> Hogan is going to be a bigger part of this WrestleMania than I think any of us really want him to be. The main event is going to be John Cena versus Maria Menounos. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Take my money. There you I'd go. AJ versus Screw it. I'm not even buy WWE Network. Just pay for the pay per view outright at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Here's another absolutely. cool question. <laughs> I got a question. Surprise entrance in this year's Rumble. Yeah. Um, Who do you want to see? I'm going for Jake. I mean, I mean, we already had Jake, Jake show up. Jake. Absolutely. Jake I mean, is a good. 
he's a good uh, mystery if he wasn't pillaging. Like, he wasn't asking for it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Years, months I would ago. Love, I'd love to see DDP. I want to see DDP back. Mm -hmm. I, I also, I mean, I, I was telling somebody earlier. You know, I want to, I want to mention Kevin Nash is in town, guys. Yeah. So is Seamus, yeah. so and Pittsburgh. so is Chris Jericho. Yeah, so I, I Chris think Jericho. we're guaranteed it's going to be Seamus. Yeah, 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 I think he's yeah, yeah. due for a return. I think for sure. Yeah. Do you guys think this would be a possible way to bring the Undertaker back as a entrant in a rumble? Yeah. I think that yeah. would be maybe huge. that would yeah. be a not to huge. win it, but he could he could definitely would, come back. Yeah, yeah. I would surprise. really like if we get at some point in the Rumble the Shield is dominant, and they look like they're about to swarm like CM Punk. Like let's say Ambrose, Rollins, and Reigns come in at five, six, and seven. And they dominate everyone, and they're just about to go against CM Punk, and then the gong hits, and it's suddenly Undertaker and CM Punk against the Shield. Well, because yeah, good. they took them out. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Maybe that'd be your match. That'd be Mania. solid. What? Because I mean, we've had a tag match before. It didn't go very. Yeah, well. Yeah, Violent Wasi Taker's past the point where he can do a tag match of Mania. Yeah, yeah. With the because when he did that. That match with um, against Albert and Big Show, they didn't talk about the streak then. No. They did, the streak was not a thing then. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now it's just like dream matches. Yeah. yeah and it's really like making something believable that who's going to get, who's going to be the one to beat it. Like maybe you go know, because every every year they make CM Punk make you believe that he could possibly do it. They make you, you know, Shawn Michaels possibly believe it, you know. Um, especially when Last they put year the was the first time it was believable. You think so? From, Even with, like, Shawn a Michaels' a career on the line? In a while. Because when while. Randy Orton faced big, when it Randy Orton faced Taker, I really thought Orton was going to do it. Yeah. As a legend killer. Yeah, I, mean, I, that, that was I the actually one. never, I never, I thought Shawn Michaels might be able to pull it off, but I never thought that CM Punk could. It was a good match. I mean, it was a great match, but I really, at no point did I think, yeah, CM Punk's got a shot at this. CM Punk, uh, I, I think CM Punk was really good in talking you into believing mm -hmm. it. I, I think as a whole, you know, um, um, it was definitely, especially the reactions in the crowd, like a lot of people weren't sure. Um, Triple H was pretty believable. Yeah, but I think that was just more people being scared because he's Triple H. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they so. There's more relief whenever the Undertaker kicked out whenever he was against Triple H. I didn't not believe that Punk was going to beat the Undertaker, but that match was still awesome. I think mm -hmm. if they want to have a really compelling match for the Undertaker at this year's WrestleMania, I think it would be wise to try to go back to that Randy Orton dynamic. Find a young guy mm -hmm. that plants the seed in the audience's mind where if you put the Undertaker in the ring with Roman Reigns, you know, the fans might just sit there and be like, you know what? Undertaker's just about finished. Maybe they're going to pull the trigger on Roman Reigns. These crazy bastards might just be crazy enough to end the streak right here. I think that putting a younger wrestler in there against the Undertaker at this point would almost be more intriguing at this point. I, and I think some, like a someone, one. a group in a sense, or even a person so like hot and so dominant as the Shield – it's convincing enough to where it's like, well, maybe they could because they've gotten such momentum. Mm -hmm. They I, really do. I, like, I mean, if you put The Undertaker though. in there against Brock Lesnar, I don't think – are you guys buying that? I mean – Maybe. I think like, Brock Lesnar could end the streak by genuinely injuring The Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That <laughs> I, I, do, I do believe that. I think that would be really interesting – an interesting way to play it would be if you could – work the match in a way that makes it appear as if Brock has gone off the script. I hate saying that, but gone off the script uh -huh. and is trying to snap the Undertaker's arm, and it looks legitimately frightening, and Heyman is freaking out because you know he could goose that in a way, and it looks like Brock has basically turned it into a shoot and has taken it upon himself to end the streak. That could be interesting. But other than that, I mean, I don't... I, can't honestly believe that they would let less. You know, the more the more we're talking, more I think about. I think it's going to end up being Brock and Taker. I really think it's going to be Brock and Taker. No, I think Brock and Batista is locked for Mania. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I really think it is because the Beast versus the Animal it writes itself. 
Yeah, that's the true. Scary they never thing really is, fought. Like the scary mm-hmm. thing is, I, I'm hoping that's not for the title. Oh yeah, God. yeah. It, yeah. It's very conceivable. Out it of is nowhere. very, very conceivable. I, I have like vomit coming up my throat now. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm. That's why I'm scared about this rumble, because everyone, but, everyone still thinks Brian's gonna win it. But it's the perfect thing to have for this rumble. Exactly. I don't know what how many times mean? we've sat here and went, "Rock, you know, John Cena's gonna." Like last year, we were like, "John Cena's gonna win the rumble." And he did. You know he's gonna yeah, win the but, rumble, right? Yeah, but you know, like how WWE likes to, because the year before, oh, Chris Jericho's gonna win the rumble. He didn't. Sheamus somehow won it. And That's even true. though Chris Jericho got his title uh, shot, I predicted WWE James was likes it. to throw little wrenches in when they think the entire internet expects something to happen. This hey, is then. why the Royal Rumble is the best pay per view out. Because it is unexpected. There are 30 <laughs> men that have a legitimate chance. Mm-hmm. All three of 3MB are in here. And I'm pretty sure who said they were all going to get them. <laughs> Hey, don't uh, don't, yeah, don't hinder Majin. Don't hinder Jinder. I'm going to get all three that's members right. of three MB. I can see this now. Now, yeah. So that's are how we excited. We'll go for it. Are we more excited because there are five out of the seven people here are going to this event. <laughs> that helps. Like if this oh, was yeah. in, who you know, like if, it's a, if this was in Dallas, I'd be happy. Still be excited. We'd still be excited. <laughs> <We'd still> be <laughs> excited. <laughs> the Rumble. It's the I'm, rumble. I know. You guys know I am if, always if like piss of, my pants excited about the Royal Rumble. Every yeah. single year it's my favorite pay per view. The fact that, that I'm going to it definitely adds something, but honestly that doesn't even feel pants, real right? to me yet. Royal Rumble all time, money in the bank, new favorite. Those are the two for me. But money in the bank to me is far is number two, but it's far down the list. Yeah. I don't know. It's a distant number two. It's a distant two. And also remember, you're only going to get one money in the bank now. Yeah. That is really unfortunate. Yeah, boo. Yeah, so, I mean, but then again, I mean, were we really happy with the two of them? No, boo, oversaturation of gimmick matches. (laughs) They better separate them before that pay-per-view. Yes. <laughs> yeah, tear those belts apart. <laughs> Do we have another reason to? I think enough about the Rumble match. Are we excited about the matches going yeah. on here? Yeah, what matches? Uh, Very much so. <laughs> what matches? Um, I like, like, I'm not terribly like. I really feel like Big Show Brock is just a big match to show. Hey, Brock can beat somebody like the Big Show. What's he going to do to the guy? I'm interested. I'm just interested to see if Brock, like the, the times that Brock is obviously going to like throw around Show. I'll yeah. be interested. I'm, just, to that. I'm excited to see that dastardly Big Show finally get his comeuppance for knocking out all those innocent, poor old men. And Brock Lesnar will be yeah. a, an instrument yeah. of justice at the Royal Rumble. And I look and forward Matt. to cheering for him, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and Matt, like last night, him making fun of Paul Heyman's voice. Like, dude, like, like what, what the fuck jerk. is wrong with you, Big Show? What's wrong with that? It's like every every week he finds a new way to make me hate him more. It's amazing. Big Show hates Jewish people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt. I think yeah. this will be killer. Yeah, I think they're finally gonna let them go, and and it's gonna be a killer match. You're, you're right. You're right. I, I'm also I'm excited, excited for uh, think, New Age so. Outlaws and Goldust and Cody. That should be a decent. I'm kind of excited. Yeah, it should be. That's one of the sleepers. That that's gonna mm-hmm. probably be good. You guys think the ti- the the titles are switching? Eh, I wouldn't be surprised. Eh, I think there's a chance. I, I kind of want they, they are. haven't really like. I, I, it's isn't it interesting this like loose association of the Shield and the Authority and the New Age Outlaws? Like nothing's been explicit. We're like, yeah, we're pretty sure you're involved, but well, the Which Shield is awesome. isn't really involved anymore. It's no. more the Outlaws. Well, Kane did sick the Shield and the that's New true. Age Outlaws on yeah. Punk on that's SmackDown. True. I mean, that's the most confirmation we've got in months. Like, this idea is floated. Oh, isn't it funny? These guys always show up with people that don't like blah, blah, blah. And maybe you know? it's not, like, a direct affiliation. Maybe it's just, like, Triple H or Stephanie being like, hey, we realize you guys are, like, the fucking, like, radish shit that we have in this company <laughs> that can just murder people. I imagine that's people. exactly how they, they say that. Just like you're at Triple H, they, you are the radish shit we have. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like just I'm just really hoping that holes. it's a bunch of it's a bunch of threads that they're gonna pull together for WrestleMania, and it's gonna be this grand tapestry that comes together. It won't, but that would be real cool. That would be it pretty could be. astonishing. Yeah. But I, I think it's the exact opposite for me going into here because I, ever since they did the abort on the Daniel Bryan with the Wyatt family thing, in my mind, everything is up in the air. Anything they had on paper two weeks ago is gone at this point. So the intrigue is seeing how much they're going to reshuffle everything going forward. That is forward. true. I think that ending the Raw last week with that crowd going absolutely bonkers uh, yeah. might have rewritten a lot of things going into WrestleMania. And, and plus the scare of did he get hurt, which apparently he's mm-hmm. clear, so that's good. Um, so will they ride that all the way to WrestleMania? Um, I'd love to see it. I don't know if they'll give him a main event, but I think they'll give him pretty – I think whatever he gets involved with will get that arena the loudest it can possibly be. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, he can, he can go on first, Mania. and that's going to be the loudest mm-hmm. match of the whole show. Oh yeah, I mean, you the guys fans re- have decided it. You guys remember when he got squashed by Sheamus, and the and how everybody went nuts after that? Mm-hmm. Well, that mm-hmm. that was the start of it. Because mm-hmm. I mean, that, that it, was basically the start of it. That yeah. re- that post WrestleMania crowd in Miami was really like the start of Angry. the movement. Didn't they start? Didn't they start the no chance? Uh, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, he was already kind of doing the no, but then they, they, it, it, that's when it really, they stepped on the gas with it because everybody was responding to what they did to him in that match. Yeah. So, what about uh, Orton and Cena? Does that have anybody uh, excited to have a nice, clean, down the middle I mean, match? The greatest the rematch in the history me. of professional wrestling. My God, if this doesn't end up in a disqualification, I, I would be surprised at any anything else at this point. I think it'll end with Randy Orton doing something underhanded. Yeah, it's gonna end via taxi. Via taxi. He's a villain. And Randy Orton awkwardly running. Like, Who's I, driving the taxi? I Who's feel driving like that car? They should at least have a special referee or something at this point. John Cena's right. dad. Who can we know? More can we also know that from Randy Raw? Or John Cena. John Cena. He looks like he's holding a poop. <laughs> <laughs> can we also know from Raw that the best part of and uh, this is from Brandon's uh, yeah, but Randy Orton is Raw column. A poop. The best part of uh, Randy Orton jacking some dude's car. Uh, uh, to go off is the fact that some dude had decided to leave early from the Randy Orton Kofi <laughs> Kingston match and John Cena <laughs> run in. That's what you get. I don't blame you him. Gotta beat traffic. <laughs> so, so many logic gaps in that whole final segment. I just, I'm still trying to wrap myself around the thought that John Cena was rolling around outside the arena with his shorts on, just like in his t-shirt. Out in the middle of Dayton, Ohio. Last, uh, come on. God, <laughs> God almighty. He, he was running the entire way from... The old ladies were screaming at their TV, Why doesn't he have a jacket on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, does, he does now have the neon, you know, the neon uh, colors now. So he can mm-hmm. be seen at night. Which is very... <laughs> even if we can't see him. Yes. Which is very, very cautious to night drivers. It's true. They have the lights know. on. They know it's John Cena, and they move out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I think that's John Cena. That's road safety right there. <laughs> Why? That's that young man, Jonathan Cena. <laughs> fine, fine, young lad. All right. right. So, of course, um, and I think we're going to do something. So, we, this idea was floated. Um, a few of us have some pretty decent seats for this uh, that you will be able to see some mayhemers on hard camp. Um, oh, and we man. thought, of course, you know, the obligatory would do an At Mayhem show sign. Um, and this is completely all Dutter's idea, by the way. Um, but we thought, what do you think we should have for signs for Royal Rumble? Bobby, no. Bobby, no! <laughs> Bobby, no! Bobby, no! That's perfect. Oh, yeah, I went no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Sign, get, get, get there are two signs. Bobby. One says Bobby, yes. one says no. But on the flip yes. side, it wants us yes. <laughs> yes! Yeah, and you can double it for Daniel Bryan's match. Yeah, they'll let you write it. I was going to say, yeah, you can sneak it in by just writing yes on one side, no on the other, and then have another piece of paper that just write Bobby on it. Yeah, how does, exactly. I mean, what is the sign policy? Like, and that way I can see you guys. <laughs> I, think, I think you're allowed to bring it in. I mean, you're allowed to bring, I think, about anything as long as it doesn't have swearing on it, right? 
or they, spend more. Apparently, you can bring ones with lights in them now. You can bring you know, electronic, yeah. giant flailing arm things on them. You can make like sticks, have maybe giant signs on now. sticks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring the sign that I made from the 1990 something when I went to a house show. It says Hakushi, bless you. We, uh, oh, we oh, made it. Oh, oh, Bobby. Yeah, even Bobby. then. Oh, that was a long time ago. Oh, 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 solid. Oh. Are you? <laughs> we, we made a Bobby, sign. Get in your car. We made a sign for one show. <laughs> and it was a house show. The one we took Missy's grandmother to. And it was John Cena U.S. Championship belt that spins. Nice. Missy was, is, I'm very proud of Missy for putting that together. Um, yeah. Just make a uh, DDP yoga sign. Hey, yeah, I can be like DDP Yoga Arrow. Feels a bang. I, like I, I would make a sign for a random surprise entrant that you think might show up, because then that'll definitely get on TV. Like if you make a Jake Roberts sign, yeah, that's getting on TV if he's in the Rumble. Or or Kamala. <laughs> oh, that'd be and, so nice. Oh. Wait, didn't Kamala lose? Kamala wait, wait, is Kamala still alive? No, he's alive. So he lost the diabetes, really I believe. Yeah, he's not. So he he's he's not showing up. So yeah. Like, yeah, so I mean, you can't really be yeah, eliminated from the Royal Rumble. How about how about a Gilbert sign? That was a good point. That was a good point. Uh, 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 Zach Gowan could not get eliminated from the from the Royal Rumble. I understand. That's true. And Maven still hasn't been eliminated. That's true too. Yeah. Even though Scotty Too Hotty never made it to the ring. That's right. Oh, uh, poor Scotty Too Hotty. Surprise. No, Scotty Too Hotty made it to the ring. He just got the shit kicked out of him by Undertaker and Kane. I remember that. Uh, it was a different. It was a different rumble. Also, side note: I watched the uh, 1990 Royal Rumble this past weekend, Ooh, um, and one. going to Matt Carlin's point about how people are like faces are being like shitty, like bad guys because of the shit they do. Hulk Hogan was the fucking worst. Yeah. <laughs> Hulk, Hogan, <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Okay, if you don't remember, uh, Hulk Hogan comes into this match, and at the time it was Randy Savage's WWF champion. He was in the Rumble, and this was the time of the Mega Powers. Uh, bad news. He was bad news. Brown was trying to eliminate Savage, and then Hogan eliminates Bad News Brown and also eliminates Savage. And Savage comes into the ring like pissed off, like "What the hell, man? Why would you do that?" And Hogan's like, "Calm down, man. You, you're being irrational or whatever. Just calm down. Just calm down." <laughs> uh, and, and, and what's Gorilla Macho saying Man's, the whole time? Macho right? Man. Did Macho Man. That's every man for himself, Jesse. Yeah, but no, no, no. Right. Listen, Macho Man shakes his hand out of respect because Elizabeth told him to, and he was being respectful, and then he left. <laughs> you listen to Miss Elizabeth when she's talking. And he was all Miss cool with Elizabeth. it. Um, then Big Boss Man comes out, followed by Akeem, and Hogan gets eliminated. Hogan straight gets eliminated by the Big Boss Man, and then Hogan pulls Boss Man out and eliminates him. He does, and then beats him up on the outside. Wait. He did Hold the on, same thing as Sid. The, the one on Boss Man was much more blatant. I mean, he didn't even have Ric Flair to help push. I mean, just like exactly. just drag Boss Man right out of the way. Wait, it's like in 1990? Yeah, <laughs> might, might have been your wrong, but... Because I'm pretty sure Hogan won the 1990 Rumble. Or he was, maybe it was 89. I don't, it was the one leading to the Hogan and Savage match. It had to be 89 because Hogan won the 1990 Rumble. Yeah. Okay, so it was the Hogan Sa it was nineteen eighty nine, leading to Hogan Savage. But we also Mason. forget to mention in ninety seven wasn't Austin eliminated eliminated, then came back in to win the mm -hmm. rumble? Yeah, he was eliminated but mm -hmm. no one saw him because I believe the refs were pulling apart DOA and Los Periquas on the other side. Right. And then he slid back when, in, eliminated Bret Hart, and then they had to do like a final Isn't that when Vince McMahon was like, oh, God, no! <laughs> <laughs> I missed a Latin lover. Where's he? Guys, on that well, point, hey, we need to wrap it up. Tell me what you learned from wrestling this week, LB. Did I you see, say Latin lover? I see. Yes, LB, the Latin lover. LB, tell me what you learned from wrestling this week. Uh, hold on. It's about down. Batista and how he dresses. But oh, I got it, I got it. like an Italian football player. I spelled <laughs> with a U and an umlaut. That's what I learned. Oh, uh, laugh. Hey, man, what did you learn? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that Josh Matthews is a dick. Oh? Yeah. Fucking 
Bad News Barrett confronts AJ and is like, no one's at your birthday <laughs> party or at your celebration party because everyone hates you. And Josh Matthews just shows up to be like, um, so yeah, what do you think, AJ? <laughs> Amen, Amen, that's you, the worst dude. Bad News Barrett impression I've ever heard. I know. I'm sorry. I can't do I've it. I've got some bad news for I've you, got some bad news. You're not British. Uh, <laughs> Matt Carlins, what would you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I'm that uh, skin-tight jeans and wearing a track jacket without a shirt on underneath never goes out of style. Wardrobe <laughs> supplied by Lady Foot Lock. <laughs> never <laughs> Matt, is that what you're wearing to the Rumble? That should be a thing. Uh, what about you, Bobby? Um, I learned that if you look down the right hallway, you can, in fact, see John Cena, although he's <laughs> late for work. <laughs> what about you, Riz? I learned that there was nobody driving that car. No? It was just magic. <laughs> Where did you? I think it was Rikishi. It was a robot. It was poop-filled magic. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, so Mad Mike. He's oh. reusing the poop in his gym bag. <laughs> Mad Mike, how about you? I learned that Oksana's entrance theme... And Randy Orton's ring entrance works way too well together. You're welcome. Yeah, thank, thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. You're welcome. So Ladies. What did you learn this week? Bobby, yes. Um, I learned, I actually learned, um, we're not the only ones that failed at fan fiction. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, did you guys hear about this? Friend. So Art of <laughs> Wrestling, there was a live um, England edition of Art, Art of Wrestling from like late last year. I think like they said like September. And they finally, like, they just put it on air. They were just kind of holding on to it. And I think I see why. Um, and it's Chuck Taylor and Adam Cole are on stage live with them. It's a good show, good show. And then you, like, get into, they want to read a fan fiction about Evan Bourne. Then it comes <laughs> to them, after the fact, recording why it didn't work. Because <laughs> it was about Evan Bourne. One, they were in England. <laughs> So I think accessibility is a little bit different. Um, so, so, and also, like, 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 Colt says, like, like, you know, when I imagine this in my head, I imagine how Evan Bourne read it to me over Skype or something and laughing to himself. And apparently that didn't get conveyed. <laughs> so, yeah. This brings up the good question. How high was Evan Bourne when he wrote that? <laughs> when he wrote that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't think, he, I don't think he wrote it, but maybe he did. I think it. he wrote it. He wrote and it. He's just like it's, and he's it's, just it's his playing. Own, it's his own fantasy. Wow. On that note, guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show. We'll be at the Royal Rumble. Hey, we're doing a meetup at 5 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, we're going to go down to Pizza Milano, just down the street from uh, Console Energy Center. Um, yes. And of course, what? <laughs> also, um, I, I know I will be, and maybe some, a couple other people will be going to Ring of Honor here in Pittsburgh uh, Saturday at the David Lawrence Convention Center. Um, so go check yes. that out as well. <laughs> um, there's also other cool stuff going on for the show. Justin Labar's actually doing a meet and greet with uh, Kevin Nash. I know Matt Hardy's doing a radio thing Sunday morning somewhere. So go look yes. up uh, that. No, don't do that. <laughs> So all that I'm kind of stuff. Of course, anything. check us out. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Yes. Email us at yes. GoodTimesAtWrestlingMayhemShow.com or the phone number 412-206-WMS0. Facebook at Mayhem Show. Uh, I'm sorry, Twitter at Mayhem Show. Facebook, Google Plus Us. We're on uh, YouTube, Blip TV, Roku, Stitcher, Spreaker. Uh, check us out any of those things. And we're here at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, live.SorgatronMedia.com yes. every Tuesday, Riz. Sorg. Yes. That's where you're gonna say yes. Yes. No. On that, guys. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. Matt Carlin's our friend in the mainstream media. Riz, thanks, Bobby, Dork. Mad Mike, Amen, DJ Launchbox. I'm Sorg, and the mayhem is out. Just wait, just wait, just wait.